On this episode of Nurse and Men, we give our final thoughts on Iron Fist. We talk about Power Rangers the movie. We also give you a couple nerd updates. And we're getting news on the Batgirl movie. All this and more on... Welcome to this episode of Nerds to Men. I, of course, am Brad Reed, joined by Gog. Hello. Cameo. What? Yeah. Wait, I, 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 I gotta do this. I haven't done it yet since I've ever been on radio. I gotta do the Martin. What's up? What's up? What's up? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> cool. I'm good. <laughs> there, maybe there's a reason you haven't ever done that. That is Maybe true. you should never do it again. WZUP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love Martin, man. I used to watch Martin all the time back in the day. You ever watch it when it's like, I think yeah, it's I do. on MTV? Heck yeah, I do. What about I you, Gog? It. Ever ever watch Martin? Yeah. He didn't do a whole lot of, you know, for him being on the radio in that show, there wasn't like, they'd be up at the station, but there wasn't like right. a whole lot of. Yeah, he would have like maybe like not a full scene. But like he'll be like two like a minute on air and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And so he didn't like. Uh, you never saw him out of remotes. It wasn't very realistic. No, it was just <laughs> it was just him at an apartment or <laughs> at his job yeah. or somewhere. And he didn't have like like his lady basically taking care of him financially. So yeah. again, for a DJ, that's not very realistic, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know yeah. how it is. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta grind, baby. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what? How did the show end? Wasn't he? Didn't he like get a big radio job in L.A.? Or ah, man, it's been so long since I seen the season finale. I can't remember. Yeah, I gotta find out. It's been a long time. Yeah. All right. Since I met you, met you, mm. shouldn't have left you with this dope beat to step to. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. I like that. <laughs> hey, anytime you, know, you want to just you just, know just bring out a song. There. This yeah. is the Nerds to Men musical, <laughs> so, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> speaking of, did you watch the Flash musical? Yes. I refused to watch it. <laughs> I did I too. It. I didn't watch it. Oh, you didn't watch it? No. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> was it? I didn't like it. Man. I was just thinking, you know. I could probably get away with not watching this one, and, and yeah. it'll be all right. It, was there anything as far as storyline that got added in, or was this just like a one-off kind of deal? It was kind of like a one-off deal, but it kind of got everybody back on schedule. Because you know how, spoiler alert, you know how Iris mm -hmm. said she wasn't going to marry Barry anymore. Right. Well, after this musical. Oh? Yeah. They love each other all over. Uh, again. Okay, but I'm since you're not watching Supergirl, I'm gonna anymore. have to spoil it for you, anyways. Same uh, because Supergirl was in this crossover uh, musical. Oh, episode. okay, okay. Because did you know both of them were on um, Glee? No, I didn't. Yeah, so she she actually both of who uh, Grant Grant uh, Barry Allen and uh, uh, what's her name? The girl who played Supergirl. Yeah, Melissa but, Benoit. So Benoit. Grant Gustin was on Glee. I, yeah, I think he was on there for like for an episode, like, but uh, ba ba beep, ba he ba can't sing. Ba he can't sing, but he can tap dance though. He can <laughs> really? tap dance though. Yeah. I didn't know he was on Glee. I really didn't know much about did him he before do, like, he a really did fast flash. tap dance, like a flash speed tap dance. <laughs> no, they didn't have their powers. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah, so it was kind of lame. <laughs> it was kind of lame throughout the whole. Deal. See, I kind of want to watch it now, just because. I mean, I want to know what you're talking about. If you have, if you have extra time mm -hmm. and you're not trying to catch up on anything else yeah just watch it I'd rather watch Canada's Worst Driver <laughs> oh dang <laughs> we got we got a chat going on, on as Netflix. well while we're doing this and uh, our friend Grant Van Winkle is commenting too he said it was Glee meets superheroes this was how the 10th season of Glee was supposed to start and then he said <laughs> two seasons he was in the private school Glee Club so oh uh, okay yeah. so yeah Grant must watch both The Flash and Glee. Did yeah. you watch Glee? Is it still on? I, don't I have no know. idea. I have no idea. I don't even know either. But let's talk about a show that we all just recently wrapped up. Spoiler we, alert. Yeah, we always want to give alert. you the warning. Alert. We all have seen Iron Fist to its end now. To completion. Yep. Yes. Yep. And I want to talk about our feelings about it. Our mm. feelings. Mm. All right. So I'll start with you, Cameo, down okay. the row. How did you feel? I enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed it. The action was decent. But like I said, and when we were just watching the first six episodes, you could tell that the fight scenes were kind of meh. Like, yeah. Like, eh. yeah. Well, come to find out, I went to uh, New World Comics, mm -hmm. and they um, we were all talking about it. There, there was some of Buck's customers. Buck was there, and uh, and one of the guys was saying that 
He wasn't trained at all. They showed him the motion, and he had to do it. Yeah, what he actually said, they were showing him the choreography about 15 minutes before Before they they shot. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So. (laughs) It's evident. Yeah, it is evident. Take note of that. Yeah. That's hard to work with right there. People that wrote Iron Fist, not even the writers, it was, you know. Yeah. Stunt coordinators, yeah, not even yeah. them. It's they should have got the uh, they should have got the uh, guy that did the Matrix movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Here's the thing: they say they do this a lot for like the Flash, those shows, but those shows are going. You know, they got 23 episodes or however many a season. Right. This one, I don't see the excuse for that necessarily. Yeah, especially it, for it being a fighting heavy show. Like the Flash, you can get away with minimal fight scenes. Right, right. I mean, it's, you know, he's a superhero. I mean, I mean you want to see people, him. But... You want to see him move really fast. But, I mean, yeah. they, they do it easy because they do, like, little lightning streaks. And you see the person get, like, pop, pop, pop. Well, that. And then, plus, by this time, most of the, you could probably run him through a typical fight scene. And he's familiar with most right, of it anyway. Right. With Iron Fist, especially, like, he's supposed to be so good at kung fu. Or is it kung fu that he practices? Yeah, it is yeah. kung fu. Yeah. We're almost in time at like the very end. We're all, we're, we'll be right in time for kung fu practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, see, another thing too is it's like okay, he's he had to be working on this show for what about a few months now, or or, or was a few months? Why not on his like time off, get him some kung fu lessons? Yeah, like, like run him through that. I mean, I don't know. Okay, check this out. If you're a police officer in real life mm-hmm. and you see a cop show. You're going to watch it and go, that doesn't really happen. That doesn't really happen. Yeah. That's not how it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So is it is it fair to expect him to be to look like a kung fu master when he's really not going to be? Well, I, I would say yes, because he is in the show. Yeah. Um, and for it to, you know, for people that love kung fu and just love everything about it, then... Yeah, I, th- I think you're not showing it respect by I agree. not not going full soul into it. I agree. I mean, if it wasn't if he wasn't a kung fu master, right, right, then yeah, he, it wouldn't matter. He but is the champion. He is, yeah, yeah, he's a champion of Kun Lun. So why in the heck are you not? Yeah, to portray him <laughs> where he's you know the the real actor doesn't have the necessary training to do the job so that it looks realistic because anything that's on a TV show, a movie. You want it to look natural, and you want it to look realistic. Right. And it didn't look like either for a little while in that show. Yeah. Okay. So, storyline, though. Storyline, I loved it. It was good. And it was funny because I heard, I think it was about a week ago, and it was just through passing, and they said that Iron Fist is better than Luke Cage. hmm And I done flipped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. I was, <laughs> I, got, I channeled my inner Ruby. Yeah, I was like, yeah. "Oh, Black Jesus!" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "I gotta slap you," because I was like, "No, <laughs> man, Luke Cage." I think by far is for me. I say it's top notch. I think it's the top one for me. Right, Gog. What were your overall feelings yes. on the show once you watched it all the way through? Um, I feel like I went into it just really wanting to like it because mm-hmm. it got such harsh criticism. Right, and there's a lot of aspects about the show that I did enjoy. But I do see where the criticisms play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it wasn't wasn't the most interesting story, I don't think. It was something they hadn't really touched on. It was kind of exploring the whole idea of family and that sometimes people that you're closest to might not turn out to be who you intended that or uh, expected that they were. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you were saying, uh, I think a lot of people were upset because – this show didn't tie in relevantly to current events. Uh-huh. Didn't have any yeah. big issue that it was exploring, which we had expressed previously that we don't need that. It right. doesn't always have to be the case. And I so agree. I think the fact that they touched on family was in, was an interesting direction to go. And I liked th- I liked that aspect of the story, kind of seeing everything play out. Because at first you really hate Ward, yeah, yeah, and then you know it kind of it, it does a good job of turning the tables. Um, like you don't know where you stand with Harold. I really liked him. He was a charming villain, or you know, but you didn't really know he was a, a villain until it gets later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the fight scenes were subpar, but you know, they, that's been explained um, with the lack of training. Yeah, and you know, just them not being prepared with him. Now, to be fair, I thought um, they got better. 
a yeah. little, you know, yeah. as he well, got. There were some that were really interesting um, and really fun to watch. And I, like I said, um, I don't know, like the Colleen fight scenes when she's in the cage towards the oh, end. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are dope. Those are awesome. <laughs> yeah. The drunken master scene. Okay. That was to me. I I really enjoyed that one probably the most. Oh, same here. I same think. here. Yeah. And I heard an interesting tidbit that the the actor who he fought with in that scene was originally they were thinking about casting him as the Iron Fist. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that would have been cool. Yeah, it might have been you know a whole different feel to the yeah. to the show. Yeah. I did. I did like. Uh, was it Finn Jones? Yeah, Finn Jones, yeah. Jones. I did like him as Danny Rand. Yeah. Uh, he was a little cheesy, but I mean, we also have to remember that these are comic book shows. Yeah, and yeah. There needs there. We need to leave room for a, a little bit of campiness. Right. We can't take all this too seriously. And and not and being a guy who's not like a hardcore Iron Fist aficionado, like sure, yeah. I didn't have a whole lot of expectation. Like in the chat, Grant saying that he didn't feel like he captured the essence of Danny Rand, but you know he might be more familiar with the character in the comics. Uh-huh. Whereas I didn't have that same expectation. Right. I also kind of, along with what you were saying, it got such negative reviews to begin with. Yeah. That I didn't have a lot of expectations. So when I found out it wasn't horrible, I was like, eh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of great things. And, and to recount on what I discussed, I think, the last time, um, whoever was in charge of, like, set design and cinematography, like, yeah. the combination of those two things, there was a lot of very visually stimulating elements of the show that weren't necessarily the characters or the story or right. just something to appreciate, like, a little bit more depth right of it as a production as a film production yeah. not just a story or a comic book series and one thing i kind of think that i enjoyed about it was that we didn't have to get i mean there was a lot of time i think that was wasted on stuff where he was in the hospital stuff like that that i didn't really see how that ended up being all that important right but i also was kind of glad that it wasn't a whole how did he become the Iron Fist story? Like, he's already right. somewhat the Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. And so it just dropped us in, and now we can go with it. I thought that the overall storyline, though, was a little bit jumbled. A lot of people have said this, and I agree with it. It was hard to see what kind of show this was going to be for a while. Mm-hmm. But by the time we got to the end, it didn't, like, totally get better, but it wasn't bad. I yeah. kept wanting to watch it up to yeah. the very end. Yeah. And so, I mean, if I kept wanting to watch it, then yeah. I can't uh, say it's a horrible show. Right, right. Yeah, it came so, to a conclusion. It yeah. wrapped it up. It left things open for a potentiality of another um, season. Or even tying into how he gets, or not necessarily how he gets involved with Defenders, because, you know, he's off going back to Kung Lao, and then the monks are, it's been attacked. So you could play off of that as an element and spend more time there in the next season, as well as the fact that now Joy Meacham is out to get Danny Rand. Right. So I'm wondering where we're going from here with the Defenders, because... I was kind of hoping towards the end right, that might right. start heading in that direction. Yeah, and it didn't. And it give didn't. Any indication. So I'm thinking that if they do a second season, that might be taking place before the Defenders happens. And the mm-hmm. Defenders, like, we're going to skip that, basically, and then mm-hmm. come back to it. Right, right. Here's another one in chat that I've heard on other podcasts. No suit. Yeah. Well, Daredevil, the first season, they didn't have the suit at all. That's true. Well, that's what, was, at the very end, they did. Yeah. 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 It was so satis- was, yeah. That's true. And it was very satisfying once that suit goes on. Uh, maybe they're not going to give him a suit. Maybe the tattoo is all they really wanted to do. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some. Uh, you should know, go with the 70s version. <laughs> right. Yeah. With the, yeah. with the uh, big deep, collars. The super deep V. Yeah. With the yeah. collar like, on it. Yeah. It looks yeah. like the singer from the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I mean, overall, I'm going to say out of all, you know, we talked about this the last time, out of all of them, it's to me not the best, but I'll take it. And I I overall enjoyed it, you know, to a B, like a B minus level. They've Mm -hmm. already put out like a little teaser video for the Defenders on on YouTube. They have like a little teaser trailer that doesn't Mm -hmm. have any footage at all. Mm -hmm. It's just setting up. And then there's also an icon for... The Punisher show, which I guess they're in production ah, with that right now. I can't wait. I was for just that. looking at some yes. set pictures. Supposedly, with John supposedly are we getting this, anything else before the Defenders though? Because I thought uh, this was it before the Defenders. I think uh, what you call it, um, Punisher. Oh, okay. Because that's what uh, Grant was saying. He thought that Daredevil, maybe he's talking about Punisher, would lead lead us into the Defenders. 
Uh, I don't mean I don't, I don't know. know. It could be. Maybe. Or. Yeah, we'll see. I can't wait for the Punisher though. Yeah, there's no way to mess that one up in my mind. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I mean, I guess they could, but he was so strong on Daredevil two. Yeah, season two. I don't. I I have full trust yes, in it. I'm so. definitely very excited for that one too. All right. So overall, I think we're all in agreement. It could have been better, but yep. it wasn't the worst piece of crap show that I've ever seen. Right. Right. Uh, I don't know. What was the worst show you've ever seen? You got? <laughs> do you know off the top of your head? Oh man! <laughs> um, like anything? Yeah, yeah, just anything that you've seen that you were like, nope. Ugh. Fuller House? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Cameo's giving him the look of shock and anger and man. No, there's definitely worse. You? There's definitely worse than that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I can't really think of it. Yeah, I'll have to think of it. Maybe next show. Well, the yeah. of East End. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all from perspective, though. Because yeah, I'll have a good idea whether I'm going to like something or not yeah. before I watch it. So, are you talking about like pr- maybe m- the most disappointed you were? Like, where if you had a, an expectation and then you watched it, and yeah, we're just kind of like, yeah. what is this? Yeah, yeah. Man, I don't know. I I don't know. That's a good question. I remember back in the day, uh, there was a Dark Shadows reboot. Like, but this was a long time ago. A TV reboot? Yeah. Okay, before the, the movie. The thing yeah, made. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, you know, back in the day, day, Dark Shadows was a soap opera. And <laughs> Yeah. But it was good, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. My mom. It was uh, a vampire soap. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mean, just as the Flash is a. <laughs> oh, soap. so it's just like Vampire Diaries and the originals. Now. I mean, kind of. My mom, <laughs> my mom used to rent them from Blockbuster Video. I I think we watched through like seasons four or five, and there's a ton of them because it was a soap opera, basically. Yeah. So then it, they rebooted it, and I remember one summer it came on, and I was like so excited for it, and then it didn't. It wasn't all that good, and it didn't stick around. I don't know though that I'd be the most disappointing. I'm just throwing one out there that came yeah. to mind, but that was one for me that I was severely disappointed. I'm pretty easily entertained, so I think I recently watched Training Day, the show. And oh, I, how was I wasn't all that uh-huh. excited. I mean, it was okay. The first the first episode was good. I thought okay, and then the second one, I was like, nah, this probably is a good. I really idea. didn't like Supergirl. Yeah, I mean, I just tried to watch the first episode. I didn't really give it an opportunity to get into it yeah. more, but. I kind of had a feeling I wasn't going to though. I mean, it's 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 really not all that good. Like I'm gonna say it. Like I I like watching it because yeah. I mean I don't have anything to watch on Monday nights. Yeah. So uh, I mean it's a good time filler. So and it also you know sometimes tie in right. with a uh, flash when they do their crossover. Yeah, since they're exactly. from another yeah. you know universe. I like it when she pops in on those, but yeah, yeah the show just. And but like I said, I wasn't ever a Supergirl fan, yeah. so there's a little bit of bias there, right? Probably right. that she. I was never a, like a super nothing man, against her. Super, super yeah, girl, Superman, super yeah, Supergirl. I, I didn't like oh, yeah that whole family. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about something that a movie we all recently watched, Ooh. and uh, do, I think do, 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 beep, boop. yeah, the yeah. Mighty Morphin Breakfast Club. Ay 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 ay. Yeah. Ay 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 Rangers. That's the original. That's the original voice. Uh yeah, the Mighty Morphin actually was just was it just the Power Rangers, right? Yeah, Power for Rangers. This movie. But uh I called it the Breakfast Club cuz they all meet in detention. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it was kind of weird like why are all these kids in detention? You know. Yeah. 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 But uh what did you guys it. think? Who was big fans of the mm-hmm. Rangers? Both of you guys. I was not. I I was not. I really it's wasn't. because you're too old, Brad. That, my little brothers watched it. I think I got drugged to the movie when I was younger and was mm. like, eh, yeah. I want to watch I got the to Adam meet Sandler the white movie. Power yeah. 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 At yeah. McDonald's in yeah. Duncan, Oklahoma. It was oh. definitely him. Definitely the real one. We have met uh, another ranger. We yes. Have. The uh, Silver Ranger from uh, Power Rangers in Space. Yeah, Justin, Justin Nemo. Nemo. Yeah. He's a good dude. He's yeah. a real good dude. I liked him. He yeah, was- I was kind of upset that we didn't get to go uh, see... The uh, on Thursday night. Oh, with when he him. went, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. Um, so okay, let's get your opinions then from the guys who really loved it, and then I'll give you mine from the guy who was just, eh, you okay. know, I'm going because the gog wants to go. Okay, go ahead, cameo. All right. Well, um, I, I enjoyed it. I think they with, with an origin story that you know not many people know. Um, and people are like, oh, you know, I mean, I never watched it growing up, but I heard all about it. Let's go see what it's like. 
And, you know, I think you'll enjoy it if you if you weren't a fan of it. I mean, it was funny. Mm-hmm. It was um, it was it had a lot of action in it. I mm-hmm. would say a lot, but I mean, it had enough. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was, I think it was like running almost like a two hour film. <laughs> it was yeah, a little over two hours. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I was wanting more. Okay. Like, I was I was wanting more after the movie. So, okay. yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Gog. I also really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, um, you know, like you were saying, being a fan of the original. And I recently went back and watched an unnecessarily large amount of those episodes <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very formulaic show. It's very cheesy. Uh, the origin story of from the TV series is the first three minutes of the show, and right. then you get right into the Power Rangers. So I thought it was cool that they give you a more in-depth um kind of backstory yeah and the character introductions like i like these characters they're different than in the show in the show they were a bunch of goody two shoes these were a bunch of kids kind of with problems mm-hmm. yeah um but that's ultimately what brings them together as friends is they all realize like we all have something wrong with us but working together we can do something great um I loved Billy. I think he was definitely my favorite. He was the funniest. He had all the all was, the parts that I actually laughed out was loud. Was Billy the guy that was on the spectrum? Yes. I thought that was really cool that, you know, he was like a, such a great character. Yeah, he, he yeah. was. <laughs> I love when he was like, oh, we're all coming together to one big Zord, like the Mama Zord. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> who was uh, who was Fo Zach Efron? What was his name on the show, on the movie? Uh, Jason. Jason. <laughs> oh, he calls. Oh, because it showed out. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks like a. He looks like Zach Efron's cousin. Yeah. yeah. Cousin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, like the characters were really good. I liked uh, yeah. Elizabeth Banks as Rita. I thought yes. she, there was parts where she was really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she. I think she had an interesting take on that character because the character from the show was obnoxious. She had that really raspy, annoying voice, and uh, um, I thought it was cool. What I think is interesting is the biggest names in the movie were like secondary. Yeah, like uh, Zordon. Yeah, I mean uh, Brian yeah. Cranston was Brian Zordon. Cranston. Bill, Bill Hader, Hader was yeah. Alpha Five. Yeah, which I thought he did a good job. Yeah, he did real good. And I didn't Alpha even realize five. that was Elizabeth Banks to like three fourths way through the movie. I think Gog said something about it, and I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is. Yeah. So I like the little the little nods that they threw out to the fans, like him saying ay 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 and yeah. 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 And morphin time. Morphin time. Yeah. And then having the original cast in the streets. Yeah. The uh, Tommy and uh Kim. Yeah. 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 That was cool. Uh what I okay, so from a guy who wasn't particularly a fan of them growing up. I thought that this movie was a good movie. I thought it was good for somebody who wasn't a fan or who was. Yeah. I thought you'll enjoy it either way. Mm -hmm. I did think that it took too long for them to get into the suits and everything. Yeah. As a guy who, and maybe even as fans who wanted to see them in the suits already. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it took a little too long before that happened. I thought the end fight was a little derivative of like Thor and some different stuff. Right, the yeah. big scary guy. Transformers. It's, it's either going to be yeah. a big scary monster or it's going to be a portal in the sky. That's yeah. basically your two options. But that for was superhero. kind of <laughs> right. That, yeah. That's but that's how it was in the shows. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it wasn't too far off the beat. I would say whether or not you were a fan, you will probably enjoy this movie. Oh yeah. It was a good action flick, mm-hmm. and like I said, the good part of them taking so long to get into the suits was that they spent a lot of time developing the characters of these yeah, people. Right. And that was good. I I enjoyed that aspect mm-hmm. of it. Well, and they're they're intending on continuing the franchise. Yes. Right. Supposedly like they got like six more films or right. five more films. So the next one can just a hit the bit ground running. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we might get through. No, it'll be cool because yeah. obviously they can bring back Rita because she just went up and is frozen in space. So they yeah. can bring her back. Uh, Lord Zed. Yeah, they do that. that. And they could make him creepy looking. Yeah. You know, they could go in a direction. I think that would be really neat with that character too. And there's a plethora of the monsters from the original series. Right. Like who? Who would, you re- who would you like to see? There were so many stupid ones, but there was a handful of good ones. One of the ones I remember was this giant pig monster. That just was Ooh, going around yeah, eating everything. Eating everything. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. You know, it would be kind of cool if they, if they would bring him back. I think his name is Slizzard, and that was Brian Cranston's villain. It, like, he was, I don't, I think he was the voice of it. Oh, and, okay. oh back in the day? Back in the day, yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. So he already had ties that. to the movie, so uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Brian Cranston, I love that guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, everything he does, I, I like it. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's uh, good. I watched that why him the other day oh, how, how Franco. was that hilarious yeah it's nothing like groundbreaking or anything like that but I thought it was funny no. so, 
Um, so yeah, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. When does the next one come out? Any idea? Uh, probably another two years. Yeah. Cool. I was just wondering, you know, if they maybe filmed kind of, you know how like they did with Lord of the Rings where they filmed a bunch of them at the we same time? We know this is going to be successful, so we might as well just can start production on the next one. Yeah. 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 Well, let's get to some of our nerd updates. Okay. We got some nerd. <laughs> updates. <laughs> uh, the Justice League trailer came out oh last gosh. week, right? Yeah. Last yeah. weekend. How excited are you previously and now? Okay. So, like, I was fanboying out. Like, I was so excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I remembered. I was kind of like that way for uh, BVS, uh-huh. and then I was like, ah, I'm just going <laughs> to come yeah. back down. Hey, I just started watching down. BVS again, since I'm still logged into your Amazon account. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And it's still good. Like, I, I wanna, I'm going to continue. I started watching it last night, and then after my girlfriend got home from work, I didn't want to subject her to it, so <laughs> I'm going to continue watching it. But it is. It's a good movie. I'm telling you, I will watch it right up to Doomsday and be content. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it, but then again, you know, like after watching all of it, it was just like, uh, okay. Somebody, but, I can't remember if it was uh, that screen rant where they do the honest trailers yeah. or wh- somebody said. It was screen a, Junkies does somebody the. Somebody uh, uh, once told me. It might have been them, but it might have been somebody else because it gets all jumbled after a while. But they were saying that it was a great Batman movie wrapped in a mediocre Superman movie. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yes, I love the Batman part of that movie. Yeah, Batman was awesome. I want to edit it down to just the Batman part. Yeah, yeah. we could do that. Yeah. And maybe put in like the Suicide Squad parts with Batman and yeah. Joker I mean, and Harley Quinn and see what you know see if that just makes a, us happy till we get something else right right but Justice League yes same same here I, I, I'm tentative about it I, I want to love it because yeah. these are characters I love but I can't take the trailer by any because Suicide Squad I thought was going to be just the best thing ever. Right, uh, right. So they make great trailers. They tricked us, though. <laughs> Suicide Squad tricked us with yeah. the marketing campaign because yeah. it wasn't just the trailers; it was the just the graphics and the visualization of of all the material that they use, like in print, the colors. Yeah. It was very yeah. attractive. It looked like it was going to be very comic booky. Well, fun, they you know? I feel like they promised us a lot more Joker. That was, right. Yeah, that was definitely false advertisement. Uh, there. Yeah. So I mean, there's uh, there's some funny parts of the Justice League trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought there were some cool parts where uh, Aquaman's jumping off the Batmobile. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks cool. And the uh, big fight, the huge battle that's going on. Yeah. I just don't know if I can trust them. I just don't yeah. know. I feel you, man. I feel you. But it, I'm excited. Uh, I do want to see this movie. And I'm telling you, if the Justice League is bad, then I'm going to be like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. tell somebody else is doing something. Yeah. <laughs> I may set these out. <laughs> no, I'm excited uh, about it. I'm, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It looks like, it. you know, evidently it's going to be a more lighthearted movie than Batman versus Superman was. Right. Uh, just based on the characters they're bringing in. Yeah. So that could be cool. Yeah. That could be real cool. Now, there was some news that was released this week. There's not a lot of details, but we can, of course, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Joss Whedon is uh. supposed to be directing a Batgirl standalone. Oh. Yeah. That would be cool. Yep. So, I feel like what they're doing is instead of doing the DCU, they're doing the Batman universe the Batman yeah. Extended Universe, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Nightwing movie, which I'm completely fine with all of that. Now, yeah. uh, give us a Red Hood movie, yeah, <laughs> right. Now, is there any Nightwing announcement? Because I've heard, I've heard them talking about it, but I haven't mm-hmm. heard. There's still not an announcement yet. Yeah, but Joss Whedon, I think the last thing he did, comic book movie wise, was Age of Ultron. Yeah. Loved it. Which I didn't, yeah. I mean, a lot of people didn't, or I don't know if they didn't like it, but they had criticisms, but I liked oh, yeah. that movie. I was just biased because of uh, the voice of Ultron. James Spader. James Spader. Yeah. Yeah. That, I liked it. I, I, did not, I did not have any problems with that movie necessarily. But uh, I love Joss Whedon. I love Cabin in the Woods. Mm-hmm. Did you see that? No, I haven't. Because uh, you you don't like scary movies. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not that scary, though, really. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Throws you for a loop there at the end. Yeah, it does. So I think you'd dig it. He wrote that, right? Or did I he just direct so. it? I don't know. That's I don't know either. The internet can explain. Internets, tell us all. The interwebs. We need like a zombie that'll be like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, zombie. We could get one of those um, little, what are they called? 
like Alexa, is mm-hmm. that what they're called? Oh, yeah. And just dress it up like a zombie. Yeah. Make a lick a high, make a hiney ho. Yep. <laughs> Tell me what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you going to um, look it up, Cameo? But yeah, I think that, I mean, he does a good job. And uh, from what they're saying, if you know, it's I, I don't know how valid any of this information is necessarily, but they're supposed to be sourcing the material from uh, Barbara Gordon's New 52. The, that yeah, girl. that's what I heard. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that was unnecessary. That's where my brain went, guys. Now so I wonder like in my brain. I wonder if there's going to be any of the uh, Batman and Batgirl hook up in the, the can. Brown now. chicken, brown cow. Yeah, I, I doubt it. No, no, you don't think? I don't think so. That's just the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think the yeah, I think a Batgirl story could be very interesting. It's I guess after this is supposed to be taking place after she's regained mm-hmm. mobility mm-hmm. from the paralyzation of the. Mm-hmm. So I, I, they could uh, do some nods, like some flashback scenes to that, so yeah. we could get some live action, yeah. killing joke sequences. That'd be cool. That would be cool. That would be. But I like that. Going to be Jared Leto though, and see yeah. also maybe okay, what about this though? This is something I'm talking to myself essentially. Maybe him doing the Joker under different direction could be. I would be. Maybe. I would be more pleased with it. Maybe potentially because uh, they went so gangster with him. But the whole feel of the Suicide Squad movie was pretty kind of hip hop culture influenced. Right. Right. Um, which you know, I'm not saying anything bad about that. Just having the Joker rooted in that is weird to me to see that. Yeah. I didn't hate Jared Leto as the Joker. I mean, I just wanted to see more because I, 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 I didn't. I just didn't feel like I got to see him like it was intended. Yeah. So I think he probably feels like he could have brought a lot more to it and didn't get the chance to, from what he says. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I don't know. I wasn't there for the filming of Could it. You but imagine I, him doing the whole scene. Of where he shows up wearing the Hawaiian shirt and the khakis <laughs> yes. with the camera. See, I think Jared Leto could do anything. And then there's yeah. also the scene where he's beating um, oh, Commissioner Jason Gordon? Todd with oh, the crowbar. Yeah, yeah. I could see him doing that. I could see it. And yeah, being super brutal. Because he could go. I thought Jared Leto did have a a way of going from joking <laughs> to vicious. You know, in that scene where he's got the guy. They look like they're in the. You know the restaurant or whatever oh, in yeah, the back yeah. room or they were in the club and they drug yeah. him into that back room you know he went from kind of toying with them serious to like being you know uh-huh. so I don't know I, I I would like to see that though if you know and maybe by the time we see Batgirl since it is a standalone maybe they'll have recast the Joker yeah you know maybe. yeah you never know uh, I mean, he might not even be a part of the story I was he you know, might not my speculation was that they could do some flashbacks yeah because they're gonna have to show be. that at some point she was the or Oracle and all right, that. right right so do you think this is gonna be a Barbara Gordon Batgirl origin no I think with you from what I've heard is that it's supposed to be after yeah so when she regains uh you know well shoot this all might just be before you know like Batman versus Superman and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It might be. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Another trailer that came out this week, Spider-Man Homecoming. I wet my pants. So did I, dude. Yeah. Like dribbled. And pooped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Okay. So I've been... I don't know how much I really want to see of trailers anymore, but right, right, because I can't not watch them. But then again, it's kind of good to kind of go into a movie not knowing. But with this movie, I've been like, "What are they going to do? Where is this going?" And I liked what I saw. It yeah. looks funny. It looks action packed. Yeah, you know? it well, looks. I mean, we know the villain, but we don't know the villain. Yeah, too. So, and the fact that he's Batman is all the more better. Yes. No. <laughs> Michael Keaton, though, I mean, yeah. love him. Man. I just watched him the other day in The Founder. Have you seen that? No. Oh, no. The McDonald's one? Yeah. Really good movie. Cool. Really yeah, good. Was, that one was intriguing. Now I want me. McDonald's. Not really. You won't after this. You'll be like, dang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looked funny. I thought it was so cool when his friend was like, can I try on the suit? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you were my friend and I found out you were Spider-Man, I want to yeah. try on the yeah. suit too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, you're the Spider-Man from YouTube. You know, uh, yeah. it's hilarious. So it's a little updated. 
But then you get to see where Stark takes away his suit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he had that great line. I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm not going to say exactly how he said it, but he was like, I'm Tony Stark, blah, blah, blah. If, <laughs> yeah. if you're nobody without the suit, then you don't deserve yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah so yeah. it's a proven himself yeah. story. But see, I'm just like, okay, really, Tony? Like, who are you? Yeah. You are your suit. So this is just a because you made it, don't yeah. mean <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Now it's a I did invention of the origin story of Spider Man. Yeah. 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 I did read that uh, you know, right now Marvel is taking over for Sony mm-hmm. on Spider Man. They've got him slated to be in the, the uh next Avengers Infinity War, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe one other, and then a sequel to Homecoming. And then after that, Spider Man's supposed to go back to Sony. Yeah. Is that scary? That is scary. Because are they going to stick with Tom Holland? I mean, are we going to... It's going to be the fourth reboot of the (laughs) Spider-Man I don't want that. I don't want it either, man. Uh, I'm kind of nervous. They're going to bring Toby back. (laughs) Uh, Oh, oh, no. (laughs) Well, see, I just don't see why they just, you know, let let Spider-Man be where he needs to be. You know, what if, though, that if Marvel can just... Because I guess what probably what you might run into is other characters that Sony still is like, nah, you can't use those guys. With them getting it back, it might be okay if Marvel's like, okay, we built it up, now you take it. Yeah. As long as, But I'm saying if Sony continues, if they're like, let's scrap what we've done and redo it again, then I'll, I'm probably going to well, be out they could do it that. with a different version of Spider-Man. They could. Yeah, you or could, like Spider Girl. Yeah, we could get our guy from Blackish in the next one. Yeah, Miles Brown. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. So I mean, there's things that they could do, but yeah. but it did make. And you know, hey, we don't need four, another origin story. Four no, <laughs> four films with Tom Holland. I mean, that's that's good. Yeah, because yeah. shoot, by the time they're done, he might be thirty by then. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So hey, it makes me nervous, man. and then maybe it doesn't, but it kind of makes me nervous. Yeah. Like, Ugh, I don't want to put an expiration date on this love fest we got going with right. Spider Man now that Marvel's got control again right right so that's where i am on that there's been some news floating around that and we've mentioned it on the show yeah but that cable will be in the next deadpool movie mm-hmm. and direct tv yeah <laughs> we're getting a lot more uh, <laughs> names <laughs> tossed around for who might be cable yeah I think the Steve Buscemi. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is actually. That, that, I heard he was the the, the top pick. He's the yeah, front runner yeah. right now on that but short if, list. <laughs> if he decides that he's just too in demand to take that, yeah, Boardwalk Empire man, I'll tell you. Another busy. guy from Boardwalk Empire has been mentioned and is probably the front runner, Michael Shannon. Okay. Did you know Michael Shannon was in Boardwalk? No, I didn't watch it. Yeah, Brad's done his research. I, I watched Boardwalk Empire. He knew that I was going to say Steve That's, Buscemi. So he was <laughs> yeah. like, I've been waiting to use this rebuttal all episodes. <laughs> Segway. Um, but that's actually how I found out that I liked Michael Shannon so much. Because uh-huh. I, I don't know, what, I don't think I'd seen him in anything before that. And I was like, this dude is awesome. And yeah. then, you know, he's been in a lot of stuff since then. He, I like the idea of him as Cable. I don't love it. I don't see it. Like, I don't see it to where I'm like, he's the perfect Cable. Sure. Yeah. But I see it that he's such a great actor; right. he would do great in yeah. it. Yeah, well, there's like that's the the next person uh, or one of the other people that we mentioned was Brad Pitt. That's like the exact opposite. Where he, those fan made posters, uh-huh. he looks great. Yeah, yeah, he looks awesome. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he would pull off that character or wouldn't pull off that character. Right. And see, I've only heard Brad Pitt from some of the other podcasts, like the Marvel uh, movie news that I listen mm-hmm. to from on the Popcorn Network. They mentioned that Brad Pitt actually went to them and said he would like to play Cable. Oh, that'd be cool. Which is weird because you'd think, you know, Brad Pitt says he wants to do anything nowadays. He could probably do it. But I don't see Brad Pitt necessarily as Cable. I'd love to see him as some kind of superhero character. You know, I could see him as a, uh, as a Cyclops. Yeah. I could see him as a Cyclops. Yeah. 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 So I'd love to see him as something. I just don't know about Cable. No, I don't see And I love Brad Pitt. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, You've heard of another one. Uh, David Harbour from Stranger Things. From Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What else was he in? We were talking about this the other day that uh, I remember. Oh, The Newsroom. Okay. Uh, That was on HBO. But yeah, David Harbour. What do you think? I know a lot of people are psyched about that. I mean, he's kind of stale on Stranger Things. He's kind of stale 
in some of the other things I've seen. I mean, he's a character actor. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe he'll do good as as Cable. I don't well, know. Well, I mean, he's not really a character actor, necessarily. He just hasn't been, like, a breakout star. Right, right. Somebody just said hello. Oh. Siobhan Evans, hi. Hey, girl, hey. Hey. That's my friend. That's my best friend. Ooh, that's my best friend. I don't ah. know the words to the song. But <laughs> <laughs> So David Harbour, you know, he's got a <laughs> <laughs> So David Harbour, he's got a lot of juice from Stranger Things though. Yeah. So uh, you know, he's probably gonna be considered for a lot of things. Juice is loose. He, he some might, might say. He might be he might be good as cable. I mean, all these names might be. I I, I if I had to pick, if you gave me those names right now, I'd probably go with Michael Shannon. Mm-hmm. But Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Jonah Hill. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. I'm saying, dude, they need to make I'm a comedy cable. version of, like, they need to get the the rights from either DC or Marvel <laughs> and make a Judd Avatar comedy version of one of these movies. Uh, that'd, yeah. be awesome. that'd, be that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Uh, I want to get, I, that reminds me of something. Remind me of the the Turtles. We I, I'll bring that up. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, so okay. before we get to that, there was a name that got thrown around on a podcast a couple weeks ago. And we mentioned it on our Facebook page. I wanted to mention it again. Lawrence Fishburne was thrown out there as Cable. And I loved it upon initially hearing it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think he's got stature. He's oh, a, yeah. He's, he's a, a, a giant man. Yeah. And he's a great actor. He's yeah. the right age. He's right. A, but I think you kind of poked a little hole in it. Yeah. I, I, I would love to see that. Mm-hmm. But then again, comic book fans will be like, oh, no, Cable wasn't black. Mm -hmm. No, Mm -hmm. you can't do that. But there's a specific reason why. Well, because uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey, those are his parents. Well, Jean Grey's clone, right? But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a valid point if you're going just from source material. Yeah. However... If you got Cable and Deadpool, they're probably not going to like spend too much time on his right. parentage. Or you could say that uh, it was a clone of Storm or, you know, instead. Right. You could you you got a little bit of wiggle room, I would think. I yeah. mean, there are purists out there. And believe sure. me, I love the X-Men. Yeah. I don't well, really yeah, just want Is Deadpool to... ever going to end up in that? They're not going to cross, really, because yeah. in, in the Deadpool movie, they had, they had the rights to two other. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, right. Two other mutants. Right. That's all they could get. So if we got Cable and it was Lawrence Fishburne, I'm not going to be mad oh, about I'm not really it. Mad either. I think that they could just easily, in my opinion, yeah. stray a little bit to I make that Ron, happen. Yeah. I think Ron Perlman, I think that's a name that's been thrown around. That would yeah. be- Ron Perlman, to me, is like, if you He's just a ideally, badass, dude. <laughs> if you <laughs> ideally think of who would be Cable, yeah, Ron I mean, Perlman just oh, for sticks sure. out like a sore thumb. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, but uh, not sure why they're not going with him or... Well, supposedly, I mean, I don't know. I've been hearing that uh, they're trying to get uh, Hellboy 3 uh, up and running. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I see. He might have prior obligations, which that's fine with me, too. Yeah. I want to throw this out there, too, a little bit. There was a name that we talked about not too long ago. Mel Gibson for directing Suicide Squad, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What if they did like an old, like an old man Logan that was a little more truer to the books, and Mel Gibson was old man Logan? I think I he could, could pull that. it off. I yeah. could see. Like, it. go look at these pictures of him, like with his beard, and like he's the to me. If there was any actor that encompasses Wolverine's body, yeah, it'd oh, be, yeah. It'd it would be it would be Mel Gibson because yeah. he's shorter. But he's big, you know. Yeah. So I just wish that there was like a Mel Gibson clone where he was like 20 now and we could recast <laughs> him. We're just, we're just going to have to play that in our heads, though, I guess. But all we could get now is like an <laughs> older man Logan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they do it. Right now, Logan is dead and yada, yeah. yada, yada. But like, what if we had one that he was... He could always come back. Yeah. Cable. He came back from, in the comic books, he came back from like one drop of blood at one point. Well, there you go. Yeah, and so, now I mean, he was in the younger, but maybe yeah. it'll just take a little longer. Now he's much, much older, and he's Mel Gibson. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the something I, I thought would be justification. Interesting, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. You can justify your way in and out of any situation, boys and girls. Yes, you can. <laughs> Let's talk about what we've been nerding out on. Oh yeah. I have been in preparation of the new season of Fargo, and I guess they're bringing back Twin Peaks. And they are. They're doing a, a reboot. And yeah. I believe Trent Reznor was on the list of cameo appearances. Oh, nice. So I've been watching 
uh, on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. I've been watching. Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching Netflix. Uh, I've been watching Netflix. Uh, Twin Peaks. Yeah. I'm only a couple episodes in, but I love it. Uh huh. And and also it's weird because I'm watching Fargo. I'm a few episodes in on that because the season three is about to start. And I love it because of Legion. Which yeah. I, we're not going to discuss this episode because I haven't seen the finally. Yeah. I still need to watch the finally. Also. So we'll talk about Legion next one. But the guy who created Legion created the show Fargo on mm. FX. Okay. And I watched, I initially I watched the first episode a long time ago. I was like, well, this isn't like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's not supposed to be. Right. right. But it, once I got into it, man, it is so good. And then when you say, you know, you, I got Fargo and Twin Peaks, and both of them are kind of like about police and mysteries. Small town. Twin Peaks is such a weird show. Yeah, yeah. I like it a lot, but it is really weird. It is really <laughs> weird. I love it. You know, I can almost, I can see where they maybe got a little bit of the feel for Stranger Things. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like with the music. And yeah, of course, I, I love David Lynch. I love his movies. And yeah, he's crazy. Yep. Uh, when we were talking earlier about shows that we saw that we were like, mm. <laughs> David Lynch has a movie like that. Mulholland Drive. I haven't seen it. Oh, it was like, you know, I watched a bunch of his movies and then Mulholland Drive came out and I was like, I don't even know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I dare anybody that's seen it to explain to me what that movie was really about. Uh-huh. I don't think they can. <laughs> but David Lynch is awesome. Uh, I don't know what his, uh, you might know, is he involved in the reboot? I have no idea. It's going to be on Showtime, I think is what I heard. So I'm watching that and Fargo getting yeah. ready. Nice. What about you guys? Yeah. Well, I mean, besides, you know, the usual Batman nerding out. Yeah. Just yeah. always thinking about Batman in my mind at all times. <laughs> uh, no, I've, it's going to sound lame, but I've been watching Lost because I never watched it when it originally That's right. came out. And it sucks you in. How far are you in now? Season three, episode like, oh gosh, I want to say 18, 17 or 18 maybe. Yeah. So, so weird hearing that. <laughs> getting closer to Get, the end. Getting used to the uh, closer Netflix. to the end. Isn't there uh, like season seven? three? Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> I still have. I'm almost halfway done. Basically, nah, yeah. <laughs> you're still in the. You're still in the. Things are getting, you know, they're still... Uh, I'm still waiting to get irritated. Yeah, no, you're like, in you're the good like, years still. Damn it. <laughs> have they got to the others? Is that where they're We've at? We've gotten to the others. We've gotten to the part where they have their own little suburb that they mm-hmm. built on the island, but then oh, okay. they have to leave and go somewhere else. Uh, I kind of um, want to watch it again, because I, I, I did, did it too. I it's a enjoy. huge time commitment. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I know. I just, and I mean... I can't not watch it at this point. I'm so yeah, invested no, that I to. have to keep <laughs> watching. To. Yeah. I calculated it, and I still have, I think, like 58 hours of loss <laughs> that I have to watch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I... Th- 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 yeah, you there's going to be. I'll check in with I you in a very couple seasons easily, and see where you're at, okay. and I might just tell you what else. I, I could think. very <laughs> easily just look up the ending of the show and be done with it, but I feel like because I've invested so much time, I nah, have to. I think you we have to shave about it. 20 hours off of this. <laughs> well, it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, yeah, it's I been mean, fun. It's been fun, kind of making fun of how ridiculous some of the characters are, and just the things that repeat themselves so frequently. Every, like the drinking game, that, for instance, that I was talking about. Where yeah. if someone's looking for Jack, if <laughs> Kate does something Jack tells her not to do, if Kate says I'm coming with you, if Sawyer gives somebody a nickname, if Hurley <laughs> says dude, if Michael's looking for his son, which by the way, f you, Michael. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I could watch it all over again. Yeah, those, all those God, hours. Just, it is such it, a commitment for Kate alone. Evangeline Lilly, dude. Oh, yeah. So, I don't uh, know. I, I enjoy although, it. Although, I'll tell you the time that I fell out of love with Evangeline Lilly. What? She was on, I think, Conan O'Brien. Uh-huh. And she was dating the guy, I think, the guy who plays Charlie, right? Uh, the guy from... Uh, you all, everybody. Yeah, the guy from The Hobbit and all that. You all, everybody. Uh, yeah, they were... Anyway, she was talking about how they were went hiking one day. Uh-huh. And they had these jars... And um, one of the jars was filled with his fart urine because they were, I guess, just peeing in the jars and going. When she came back and didn't realize it and took a big swig of it. Uh-huh. And I, and when she told that story on Conan, I was like, I just I fell right out of love. 
<laughs> I can't be in love with anybody who drinks pee. See, that uh, would make me more apt to fall in love with her for telling that story. Uh, like, this girl is real. Shame on you, God. Real, <laughs> and she gives no Fs. Yeah, <laughs> she, did, she didn't. She didn't. But yeah, yeah. what is she... I, I'm trying to think of what she's been doing. Uh, Ant-Man was the last movie that, That's I've, right. seen, that I've seen yeah, her in. Ant-Man, but, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but the you all, everybody. <laughs> yeah, drive shaft, drive shaft. Uh, what else have I been nerding on? I don't know, man. Like, I watched that in Legion. Yeah, I think it's just been lost, man. I think I've been lost and lost. <laughs> you can, you can uh, be lost yeah, and lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the day, when I was on the Phil Drew and Casey Two show, mm-hmm. me and Drew every Tuesday or when did that come on? Like it was like every Tuesday night or Wednesday night. We would get together and watch that show. It was like an event. Uh-huh. And then the last couple seasons, it was like, oh, I'm probably just going to watch it at my house. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's like, <clears throat> if I would have had to have waited a week each time to uh-huh. watch the next episode, I feel like I probably would have given up and just been like, no. I mean, you're still in when I thought the sh- show was still really good. Yeah. What, yeah. what about you, Cameo? You been nerding out? Um, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm been watching uh, the comedy specials on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, Joe Coy. That dude Joe is... Joe Coy is he's, hilarious. Did you watch this yeah. last one, I, uh, I, Live I, from Seattle? I got through about three-fourths of it, and then I had to go do some. But he <sighs> is funny. <laughs> Man, is when he really talks funny. about his kids, dude, cracks me up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he was yeah. talking about his family. Oh, man. And Dave Chappelle... Oh my gosh, so yeah. good on Netflix. I guess there's another one about to come oh, sweet. at some point. But uh, what I thought was really great is they're, they're two completely separate sets, mm-hmm. about an hour long, and they're both hilarious. Yeah. He's a, he's a genius. Oh, yeah. I love Dave Chappelle. Uh, this will probably be a good time to plug an upcoming show we're planning. We're going to talk about comedy. Comedy. Oh, with our friend Bill is 5K. Who nice. Is, uh, part of the comedy group that Gog participates in. Yeah. Wood and Elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got that. We're working on that. But yeah. What else? That's pretty much it. I've just yeah. been watching comedy specials. Um, but I can't wait for uh, this Friday, April 7th. Yeah. The Get Down Part 2 comes back out. That's right. That's yes. right. I need to yes. get done with Twin Peaks and Fargo so I can <laughs> check that out. Yeah, that's right. Or you just put those on hold and then finish this. I'm so. sucked in. Gog? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Uh, I want to go circle back to something you had mentioned, which is that you're watching Lost. Yeah. And I heard some good news on the Fat Man on Batman podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Mark on that show, he's going to be writing for a new show that J.J. Abrams is producing. Ooh. You probably won't like it. Why? <laughs> it's called Castle Rock, which if you're a Stephen King fan like me... That seems sounds familiar. It's where a lot of things go down in uh, his universe. Because if you, if you read his books, they're all interconnected. Like Stephen King was the first to have like these... Inter- no, maybe not the first, but like... To me, he would you he, say he's the king? Yes, of interconnected storylines. He is. He is interconnected, but separate storylines. Yeah. So this new show, Castle Rock, is going to be on Hulu, like um, that eleven twenty three sixty four seven. James one of those. Franco. Yeah. yeah. Which I really, I really enjoyed that show because I love the book. Freaking love the book. One of my favorite Stephen King books. Oh, but wow. Dang. Anyway, the Castle Rock <laughs> is supposed to be where they're going to mix in a bunch of different stuff from his different books. That's kind of a cool idea. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny when you said Castle Rock, I was thinking Fraggle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> because it was Eureka's Castle and Fraggle Rock. Yeah. 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 They're just, bring it, they're just bringing it back. They're doing a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. I love Fraggle Rock. That's sure. I didn't get to watch Fraggle Rock when I was little, though, because we didn't have cable. I love Fraggle Rock, man. So I always had to catch it like here and there. Or on like the Sesame Street Muppet special or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. That was that was rude that they didn't have that where I could watch right, it. Right. I'm surprised Netflix hasn't picked Fraggle Rock up oh, somehow. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Let's get to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's close on yes. this a little bit. Oh man. So I heard that they're gonna make another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Yes. And the original idea was to have comedians like Sam Kinison, mm-hmm. who's now dead. Yeah. And uh, who are the others? Uh uh, what's his name? Not Murray. Uh, Crystal. Billy Crystal. Yes, Billy Crystal. And I can't remember the other two. Oh, uh, Gallagher. <laughs> yeah. And Bobcat Goldwaite. Yeah, Bobcat yeah, yeah. Goldwaite. So they're thinking about doing this 
With those same guys still. Yeah. Except for obviously Sam Kinison. Well, Kinison, supposedly he was supposed to play Raph. <laughs> yeah. So. He would have. Hey, I think he would have been a good Raph, though. I don't know. Oh! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I Do you remember I'm, Sam yes. Kinison? Yeah. yeah I, I to, forgot. will get Andrew Dice Clay to do it instead. Oh, man. Andrew Dice Clay, yeah. So this could either be the worst Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie or the, or the best. best thing that I've ever <laughs> so seen. There's still plenty on. It's just supposed to be like a comedy. Like, I, it's yeah, not really yeah. The I was, ones I, they're doing it, that they're currently doing. Well, supposedly I mean, this, this is internet stuff, too. So know, take it for what it's worth. Right. Supposedly this was uh, pitched a long time ago for right. the movie. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Evidently. And then it obviously <laughs> didn't go through. Yeah, like, no. You know it, let's this was, make it anyways. Yeah. This was 2007. Let's get the biggest comedians out there. That was right. Billy Crystal. No, that was like 1990s. I know. I'm kidding. Yeah. Would. I wonder if Kinnison was he alive in ninety seven? I can't remember when he exactly died, but but so but yeah, they're still thinking about doing this still with those guys. I don't dude, no. Like if you if you're gonna do it with comedians, do it with the ones that are hot now. Update it, sure. Yeah. Sure. That could still be a great idea. Yeah. Although Bobcat <laughs> I'd oh, like guys. to see him. I uh, would kinda, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. uh, He'd be Donatello, know. probably. Probably. Yeah. Who would be Mikey? It would have to be, uh, uh, what's the name? Gallagher. It had, yeah. It had to be Gallagher. Gallagher, though? Why, why, I don't know. What purpose would he serve? And then Billy Crystal, he obviously. Smash Leo. Billy Crystal would be Leo, hammer. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Can we get Mikey over here to bash a bunch of watermelons yeah, right. on, on the people? <laughs> I think Mark Maron tried to do an interview with uh, Gallagher that went extremely South. poorly. Yeah. <laughs> went mad. Because he tried to like call him out on some... Some inappropriate stuff he had said at a show, and he just got mad about it. And well, you know what's down. funny is sometimes I guess it's not Gallagher. Sometimes I think it's his brother or his cousin. <laughs> There's two Gallagher's out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to watch Gallagher back in the when yeah. I was little. I used to uh, think I always saw his, his VHS tapes at the <laughs> yeah. rental. Yeah, uh, movie rental. Place. My friend Siobhan said they're making a Fraggle Rock on HBO. Cool. Cool. I can't wait. Again, oh, wait. though, I have to. Uh, there's uh, a whole bunch. Of, a whole, it's like yeah. a dark version of Fraggle Rock. It's going to be like Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a whole generation of kids that are going to be just like me, though. They're like, oh, I don't have HBO. Yeah, but hey, I got a Fire Stick, though. Yeah, well, but I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those either. So, <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> no, we follow all rules and laws and regulations. One more thing before we go. I want yeah. to say thank you to everybody that has voted on the logo oh, oh, yeah. so far. We've kind of boiled it down to, if you've seen the picture, number two and number four. So we're going to put our heads together here and maybe come up with a couple of different variations of those two top choices. Put it through one more round of voting, and then I promise you that will be the final round of voting, and we'll yes. give you a conclusive pristine finished nerds to men logo i want to thank everybody out in the chat for chatting with us yes. yeah we and always love when you participate for sure we gotta also say thank you to all of our followers uh you know we wouldn't do this without you guys yeah so uh you know whenever you take the time to listen to us even if you don't and you just like our page and see the stuff that we do post and you do kind of interact with us we appreciate that definitely we do. yeah and uh go tell your friends Tell your friends we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on Spreaker, we're on iTunes, we're on Facebook, SoundCloud. We got a website, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah. Yes. So many different options. Yeah. Yeah. So anytime. Search us. Just yeah. search us. You'll find us somewhere. Yeah. And every time we do a recording, we do it on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. set your notifications on Facebook Live for Nerds to Men. It'll pop up on your phone or whatever device you're watching on. It'll tell you that we're on. Before we go, we have an interview, though, that we want to share with you. Cameo, you, I mean, did this just blow your mind to get to interview one of the Ghostbusters? Uh, heck yes, man. It, it was <laughs> nuts, dude. Like, I, I was fanboying out, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this interview sounds too bad, <laughs> because, like, I, I was starstruck. Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Winston. Winston, yes, the Ghostbuster, <laughs> yes. I loved Winston, man. Yes, I loved all the Ghostbusters, but, but Winston was was pretty dope, man. And yeah. then uh, <laughs> reading, you know, the comic books too. Winston's was just even more of a uh, of a BA, yeah, in the comic. <laughs> so you got to sit down with him. Is he working on anything new? 
Um, yes, he has a couple uh, shows out. Uh, one of them is on Netflix. The cool. other one is on um, Fox, APB. All it's right. actually a decent show, so All right. check it out. Well, enjoy this interview with Cameo and Ernie Hudson, the Ghostbuster. Who are you going to call? Ernie, Ernie Hudson. Hudson. Oh, oh yeah. we have a Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Sam. How you doing? Uh, you know, I can't complain, even though it's a Monday. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And, uh, <laughs> there's no good to complain to me, so there you go. <laughs> well, hey, man, I, I got to ask you. I know you're in the new show on Fox, APB, which I love, by the way. Oh, thanks. But I got to ask you some Ghostbuster stuff. Okay. How fun was it shooting those two movies together? It was just a, um, a you know a real turning point in my life. It was a great time. It was a great time to be in movies. Uh, you know things have changed a bit in the studio system, but it was just a real a, just one of those great experiences that uh, I'll always have with me. And it's great that the movie is so popular and people still love it. And even that we did the third one. Um, you know, uh, years go back. Uh, but yeah, I'm very proud to be a part of the franchise. I've been a fan of the Ghostbusters since I was a baby. <laughs> I mean, you guys cracked me up. I love the whole cast. And I, I got to say, it was, you know, something that I, I grew up loving, even though I don't believe in ghosts. But if I was going to call somebody, it had to be y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that uh, it's cross generations. You know, back in the day, parents took their kids, and now those kids are growing up and they're taking their kids, and uh, that's very, very special. Okay, you also are in tons of movies and and TV shows as well, but I didn't realize that you were in some of my favorite ones: uh, Hand That Rocked the Cradle, um, also Congo, yeah. The Crow. Right. I mean, I love all those movies. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that a lot of people didn't tie the characters together, which to me is a compliment because, you know, as an actor, I'm dedicated to the character and telling the story. Um, so when someone said, oh, I didn't realize you, the hand of the cradle, were the same guy in Ghostbusters or the same guy in Congo, then, um, then I did my job well. I mean, you are like a chameleon when it comes to your different characters because you played Solomon in the hands that rocked the cradle and you were mentally challenged. And you go to yeah. Ghostbusters, and you are a like gun toting, ghost capturing like beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, well, now I do three television shows. Um, I do APP on Fox, which is a show we're talking about coming on Monday nights, and uh, I play a police captain in that. But I also do Grace and Frankie. Uh, we just came out with the third season on Netflix, and I play a farmer in that. Just a real down the earth guy and then on FX I do a series called Grave with Nick Nolte and Seal Ward where I play this inside Washington uh, political fixer and he's a very high end very very different character so it's great for me as an actor to be able to sort of explore all these different areas and how do you get into character whenever you are, are doing different roles because you, like you said you play a policeman then you're your farmer like how do you get into these roles well, you just, uh, I think when you read a script, you get a sense of the, uh, the APB, uh, police captain is a guy who's been a career guy, um, not happy with the way a lot of things have, you know, being done. He still lives in the same neighborhood he grew up in. It's a neighborhood that's least served by the police department. He knows the change is necessary and he has that weight on it, but he's not the guy in charge. And then when this new guy comes in, he goes from being sergeant to the captain, and now he gets to make the call. And so that's a very, it's a guy with a different determination and different will. And Grace and Frankie is a guy who has worked hard, has made his money, he has a big farm, that he just, he's in a good place, and he just wants now to find somebody that he loves and he, he likes hanging out with. So he's just a very down to earth, life is good guy. And then on Graves is the guy who protects this ex-president who has lost his mind. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's just very, it's very different worlds, and it's, um, yeah, it's kind of nice for all of that. You also were on Key and Peel, also one of my favorite shows that that was on uh, TV. How was it like working with with comedians of, of their stature? Yeah, I love it. There's a part of me that uh, I mean, I love comedy, so and I love to to laugh and make people laugh. Um, uh, Rashida Jones, 
who mm-hmm. was a so-called anti uh, Tribeca. They just brought me on to play her dad. And uh, I just, I, you know, to me, it's nice to just let go and have fun and look and laugh. Um, but it all depends on the story you're trying to tell. And, um, but yeah, I can go with, uh, I love hanging out and letting it all hang loose. And um, the glad that, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it feeds our soul. So it's always great to do. And to and tell, I mean, those guys are brilliant. Uh, I haven't seen any that's out but uh, it's just, it's just brilliant guys. And it's nice that they have a form that, um, you know, the uh, industry has opened up to, you know, letting new talent and different people that diversity thing it's great uh, and I, I really respect them all so much have you seen Get Out Jordan Peele's movie no no that's what I'm saying it's a new movie that I haven't seen yet I saw the oh. other one about the cat I can't remember Keanu but um <laughs> yeah I just thought it was just fun but yeah I haven't seen the new one yet I am um actually I might even see it today but I'm looking forward to seeing that have you seen it oh man I loved it it is probably oh. one of my favorite movies right now Oh, really? Oh, God. Okay. So, uh, I'm sold. I got to go. My son is visiting me from New York, and uh, he had mentioned more to go see it. So maybe uh, the two of us would just hang out and check out the well, yeah, you should because I mean, this is this is not one of the movies that you need to sleep on because this is probably, like I said, this is my one of my favorite movies right now, and I mean, just everything, his message in it. I mean, it's just beautiful and awesome. It's just it's just, it's just great. Oh, great. Okay, definitely. You definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it out. All right, cool. Um, anything else that you're going to be uh, uh, starring in coming up in in the future? Well, the uh, no, I like I said, I've been um, you know doing uh, the different things. Grace and Frankie just came out. Uh, the new season, you know, Netflix just released them all at the same time. We're shooting our season four, uh, ATP. Uh, it's on Monday nights, and hopefully it'll get a pick up. But um, I really I love that show. Um, the uh, Epic series, uh, Grave, just got a pickup. That's with Nick Nolde and Sheila Ward. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be going back and exploring that whole thing, uh, the thing with um, Rashida Jones, um, Andy Tribeca. Uh, hopefully there'll be more of that. Um, there's a series called Survivor's Remorse that um, uh, uh, LeBron James, one of the producers on, uh, I, I play an ex uh, I'll play on that, and I'll probably be doing more of those. And so uh, I'm just looking for the fun and the enjoyment, and also now trying to find those those lead roles that uh, where I can just pour everything that I am into them and just have fun. That's awesome, man! Like, and I wish you the best because I'm mean, you are one of my favorite actors as well, and. Man. Like, I, I look up to you because you are like almost like a jack of all trades. I mean, you're just the guy. <laughs> Thanks. And I think that's what we you know when I look at friends who pass on and I think uh, the best I can say they were good men and I think it's what we want to be is just you know good people and uh, to do good work and to, to be an example of what's possible as opposed to an example of all the things that we don't want to see. Great man. And Ernie Hudson, like I wish you uh the best to your career. Thanks so much, man. And, and good luck to you too, man. Stay strong. I really appreciate it. And before you go, is there anything um like social media wise that you want to give out? Yeah, it's uh on Facebook and uh I think Instagram or whatever. It's uh, I'm Ernie um Ernie Hudson official and on Twitter I'm Ernie underscore Hudson. So um be in touch and I'll try to reach back and all that stuff. Well, awesome, Ernie Hudson. Uh, Again, have a wonderful day and hopefully talk to you again sometime. I look forward to it. Take care of yourself. This has been a Nerds to Men production. Subscribe today and check them out at nerdstomen.com.